Vrizian fires off the stone edge, securing the knockout. We send back out Skunk Tank. The opponent did over farm, but they lose CMP. It's going to be high Vrizian, by Vrizian. Welcome back to the channel. Season 16 is drawing to a close. There's only one week remaining. All three leagues are available, so it's time to drop the strongest team for the Open Ultra League. I know what you're thinking. Absolutely everyone and their dog says this is the strongest team. However, can they back it up? This team has it legend 13 times this season already, so it speaks for itself. This team was created by my friend Ayu. He has managed to hit legend with it this season, last season, and probably around the last five seasons, I'll be honest. He's been using it for absolutely forever. However, it just got even stronger because the most common core this season in the Open Ultra League is Verizian and Steelix, and this team absolutely shits on that nonsense. Some points to note, if you would like to run this team, Ayub says you absolutely need to run Shadow Skunk Tank, not the regular. That is because you can potentially two-shot Registeel with the Flamethrower and you want that additional Poison Jab damage. We're actually going to be showcasing 25 battles today. I'm sure a lot of you know I create content exclusively on my mobile phone. This is the longest video I've ever looked to put out. So if you appreciate that, I'd appreciate some support because in the final weeks of the season, it is very difficult to get any kind of momentum on YouTube. With that being said, let's jump into the battles. And in game one, we lead Shadow Skunk Tank into Greninja. AUB farms up, throws the crunch, forcing a protect shield. Not only do we force that shield, we also get the defense drop. The opponent fires off the Hydra Cannon. Ayubi shields the first and he's willing to shield the second, thinking Skunk Tank might be valuable and he's absolutely right. The opponent switch out into Kanto Mark. Ayubi farms up, throws the flamethrower on the CMP side, getting Kanto Mark down below half health. Shadow Skunk Tank already putting in so much work. Thunder Punch doesn't get the job done. Ayub continuing to stay in, throws the crunch. The opponent still has one protect shield too high behind, but they're reluctant to shield Mark Skunk Tank's putting so much work in this first battle. If Greninja does come in and look for the farm down, they're going to be left so, so low. Back out comes Greninja. They get the full water shriek and farm down. But where's this energy going into Tapu Fini? Hydra Cannon just tickles. The opponent's going to get farm down. They realise that. Pivot out into Glissopod and Ayub shows cat-like reactions and sends out Trevenant. Glissopod still has one protect shield too high behind. They fire off the liquidation. Fishing for their defense drop, they don't get it. Ayub then farms up, throws the seed bomb on the CMP tie. Seed bomb forces the final protect shield. And then from here, this should be quite plain sailing. Ayub's only lose con would be the opponent making the Moonblast catch back onto their low health Greninja. The opponent can throw whatever they like. Tapu Fini really doesn't care. The opponent fires off the aerial ace. We withstand the damage. Ayub over farms, throws the Moonblast. Moonblast will be secure in the knockout. And Greninja is going to die to one water gun. And that's going to be all she wrote. GG's and thanks for playing. Shadow Skunk Tank, MVP of battle number one. In game number two, we see Shadow Skunk Tank into Clefable. What a beautiful lead. The opponent save switches into Shadow Claw Giratina. Shadow Skunk, just core breaking teams. Dark Poison's always been my favourite type in the Open Ultra League. It's only weak to ground, hence AUB's got two ground type answers in the back. We land the crunch, we then see their pivot into Tapu Fini. Despite us being a fairy and the opponent being a dragon, you will notice AUB through the crunch to either force an early shield advantage or get that damage. That essentially means we're going to be guaranteed to win this matchup. If you would have pivoted straight into Tapu Fini, the opponent could start shielding up Moonblast and this game would get incredibly close. AUB water guns this Giratina into a range where Surf does secure the knockout and we've got a whole heap of residual energy. Good to go. Back out comes Clefable. We fire off the Surf. Surf goes unshielded. The opponent's going to be forced to throw. AUB actually banks the Surf and then sends back out Skunk Tank. With two protect shields, two high behind. We shield up the Moonblast. The opponent then sends out Swampert. And Ayubi already looks like he's got this game signed, sealed and delivered as there's a Trevenant lurk in the back for this pesky mud boy. The opponent is very nicely over farming, as you'd expect, as these battles are around the expert legend Elo range. Hydra Cannon secures the knockout, however Swampert is about to be met with the wall. As they're a regular Swampert, it looks like even three Hydra Cannons won't secure the knockout. The opponent throws the first, Trevenant says give me another drink, I can take these all days. The second Hydra Cannon... Gets us down below half health. Ayubi again farms up. Throws the seed bomb on the CMP tie. Swampert choosing to invest that protection. We're going to see Ayubi match shields. It's now all shields down. The opponent sends back out Clefable. And stay in school kids. Learns a count. We catch back onto the low health Tapu Fini. We can send back out Trevenant. 
Ayubi just needs to farm up to the back-to-back, -back, the opponent recognising the game's over and concede the match. GG's and thanks for playing. After just a few battles, you can already see that Ayubi's counting is absolutely on point. He is always maximising his energy. In the next battle, we see Cobalion. In the two shield, not the best matchup for Skunk. However, when shields are down, the flamethrower does around 75%. However, in the two shield, we've got two better responses in the back. We say switch into Tapu Fini. The opponent throws the stone edge and we see Aubi invest that protect shield, wanting to keep his Tapu Fini healthy. The opponent then sends out Drift Blim. We land the first surf. The opponent fires off the Shadow Ball. We easily withstand the damage Aubi farms up to the back-to-back -back surf. So we're going to see Drift Blim start investing protect shields. Aubi looks to throw back-to-back, -back, allowing the opponent a full free hex. However, the opponent still isn't going to be able to hex farm us down. And they're going to be forced to throw. The opponent throws the Mystical Fire, revealing their moveset. Mystical Fire doesn't knock out and Drift Bloom is now left deep into the red. Skunk Tank is about to fall victim of the debuff treatment. But as I said previously, when shields are down, Shadow Skunk Tank actually has a pretty good match against Cobalion. As that Flamethrower does around 75%. Ayubi will be forced to pivot though as we are going to get double debuff. So I don't even think two Flamethrowers will get the job done. Let's see what the opponent wants to do. The opponent thinking about what to send out and they actually choose to send out Giratina. AUB fires off the crunch but double debuff. This won't do all that much damage. The opponent then pivot back out into Cobalion and we answer with Trevenant. Trevenant now looking primed to sweep. Unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know Giratina is incredibly fixed. They easily survive one Shadow Ball. So that debuff crunch is actually going to do us a big favour. They might just about be in Shadow Ball range. AUB shielded up the Stone Edge. He even goes for the undercharge knowing Trevenant. We'll leave with another Shadow Ball ready for Giratina. We tank the next Stone Edge. AUB does leave with the move. Back out comes Big Bad. Bulky Giratina. Can they survive a Shadow Ball? Holy crap. Yes, they can. But they're going to get Shadow Claw farmed out afterwards. And AUB wins a very well played game. In the next battle, we've got some Shadow and Shadow Prime. And type an advantage very much with us. The opponent say switches into Shadow Ampharos. And AUB is happy to stay. And you can already see why he says that the Shadow Skunk is the one you want to go for. Just look at this poison jab damage in neutral situations. We shield up the Thunder Punch. Return fire with the crunch. The opponent shows no respect and they're straight in and straight out. The opponent's going to be forced to show their third and it's revealed to be Charizard. Skunk Tank gets to the crunch. Crunch will be forced in a protect shield. Charizard essentially shield everything. We even get the defense drop, which is going to prevent Charizard from over farming. They fire off the Blast Burn as soon as they get it. We send out Tapu Fini, the opponent pivots into Alolan Nine Ninetales and we answer with Trevenant. This is actually the Powder Snow variant which is worse for Trevenant, however Trevenant's role in this battle is going to be as the third shield. We survive the Weather Ball return fire with the Shadow Ball, we're only going to reach one move so we may as well YOLO the nuke. You can see the opponent stops attacking trying to call off their timer, however they're still going to be switched locked. Ayubi's just got to correctly shield up the Dazzling Gleam, we respect it. The opponent goes for the Weather Ball bait, however their timer isn't going to pop up. Ayubi over farms, fires off the Surf. Surf will be secure in the knockout and that's essentially going to be all she wrote. Back up comes Charizard and the opponent concedes as well. Heading into the next battle, we see an old friend or perhaps foe in the form of the Kentucky Fried Chicken, Bird of Death. Again, just look at these neutral poison jabs. Ayubi fires off the crunch as soon as he gets it, which is good timing. After seven poison jabs, that's 14 turns into 15 turns. We see Ayubi look to call the flame charge. The opponent YOLOs the brave bird. Nuking us through two shields. Something you'd likely see on this channel. As I love to call baits and I always get nuked through two shields. We send out Tapu Fini. The opponent not wanting to get farmed down. Send out Swampert. And Ayubi responds with Trevenant. Again you can see Ayubi being very on point with his energy management. Seed Bomb would essentially one shot from full health. However you can see over farms. Getting the Shadow Ball ready for that returning Kentucky Fried Chicken. Bird of Death back out it comes. Is the opponent willing to invest their final Protect Shield? Yes, they are. The opponent gets the full Incinerate Farm down. We've got a 2 to no Shield advantage, Tapu Fini. Back out comes Fini. We respect the Brave Bird again. The opponent is not baiting. And then send out Blastoise. Unless the opponent's got Skull Bash, they can only hit us for resisted damage. However, it looks like the CMP tied to the Hydro Cannon. So this is going to be an easy no shield for AUB. The opponent fires off the Hydro Cannon. We easily withstand the damage. I've got no idea why the opponent hasn't top left. But it is what it is. AUB is going to shield up the next Hydro Cannon. We just need to farm up to the back to back Surf. One Surf to get rid of Blastoise. One Surf to get rid of Talonflame. 
Hi Blastoise, bye Blastoise. Bring back out that old friend, back out comes my old friend and the Kentucky Fried Chicken, Bird of Death, gets a nice drink and gets Vanquish back to its Pokeball. GG's and thanks for playing. In the next battle, we see the battle of the Dark Types. This Mandibuzz, aka the Vulture, or Flying Umbreon, is the Snarl variant, so very advantageous for our Skunk Tank. You can see the Aerial Ace still looks like Aerial Ass, so it's going to take around four to get rid of us. We're hitting for neutral the entirety of the time. The opponent... Recognising it's a bad matchup, send out Amp Cross. We've always seen Aubi likes to stay in this matchup. Just look at this ridiculous poison jab damage. The opponent baits with the brutal swing, which means they've likely got focus blast. We fire off the crunch, we get the defense drop. Oof, Aubi invests his final protect shield. Hopefully, the opponent, now they've got the defense drop, don't shield this next move. We fire off the crunch. I think if the opponent shields this, we might get RPS. The opponent reluctant to shield. The low health Ampros and send out Toxicroak. AUB is down shields. We've got the correct alignment and it's going to be RPS for the win, baby. GG's and thanks for playing. We see some more Shadow on Shadow crime. Skunk Tank into Articuno. Again, AUB will strike first, reaching the crunch one turn before the opponent potentially give us that debuff treatment with the Icy Wind. The opponent shields the crunch and then for a really poor timing. So three turn into two turn. You always want to throw on odd numbers. The opponent chose to throw after two. And AUB definitely not complaining. Getting a whole free poison jab. We land the next crunch. The opponent does get the full ice shard farm down. However, Tapu Fini can easily absorb the icy wind. Hopefully with Articuno out of the way, Trevenant will be good. We will stand the icy wind. Snipe with Trevenant, not only resetting our debuff, but also getting a running start. The opponent sends out Mew. We YOLO the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball forces the final Protect Shield. Mew's a real bag of tricks. Gonna see Aubi invest a Protect Shield, and that is a very good shield as Flame Charge would have done a lot of damage. The opponent banks a boatload of energy, pivots out into G Weezy, but G Weezy isn't gonna appreciate this Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball lands for huge neutral damage. Ayubi still has one Protect Shield, two high beyond. We invest it here. The opponent YOLOs the overheat. We bank the Shadow Ball, pivot into Tapu Fini and get yet another Conceive. GG's and thanks for playing. Skunk Tank into Verizian. Come on, trainer. Show me your Steelix. Unfortunately, it isn't a Steelix. We've seen this Ampros matchup play out time and time again. Ayubi just going to stay in, fire off the crunch, forcing an early Protect Shield. Unfortunately, this time we see no defense drop. Ayubi going to invest the Protect Shield as well. The opponent throws the Trailblaze, which would have been resisted. However, does boost up the residual Volt Switches. The opponent baits with a Brutal Swing. Ayubi looking for the full Poison Jab farm down, and we get it. Ayubi always very happy to invest Protect Shields in the mid game, looking to always force the correct alignment back out. Comes Verizian. Does the opponent invest their final Protect Shield? No, they don't. Flamethrower lands for huge damage. We then fire off the Crunch. Crunch. Probably won't be lethal, but will leave the opponent incredibly low. The opponent left on 1 HP and a Dream. Pivot out into Heliolisk, looking to snipe, and we answer with Trevenant. This is by no means a good matchup for Trevenant, as due to Heliolisk's subnormal typing, our Shadow Claws are double resisted. However, it isn't actually the worst matchup, as due to our Grass subtyping, these Volt Switches are resisted, and these non stab breaking swipes don't do that much damage, but they do apply the very annoying debuff effect. Despite us now being double debuffed, the opponent likely shields this seed bomb as this is the only healthy remaining Pokemon. The opponent's even going to be forced to throw one further break in swipe as they're going to be unable to Volt Switch farm us down. AUB has no protect shields too hard beyond, but a lot of Heliolisk actually run Grass Knot. Let's see if they've got Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt lands for huge damage, but we survived the damage. The opponent then looked to make the catch. The unsuccessful we leave with the Surf and Ayubi is going to win a very close game. GG's to both trainers. You can see both players had the same idea as Ayubi was also looking to switch. In the next battle we see Shadow Dragonite. Another matchup where the Shadow Skunk is advantageous as the Poison Jabs tear through the Squishy Dragonite. We should let the Dragon Claw return fire with the Crunch. Of course Crunch will be forcing a Protect Shield as Dragonites essentially shield everything. This is a matchup where Ayubi told me if you actually get the defense drop, you're able to poison jab farm down in the two shield. However, he actually doesn't play out the two shield instead, looks to catch the Dragon Claw onto Tapu Fini where it is double resisted. The opponent dumps their energy and then enter the mirror. Ayubi full sends the Moonblast, Moonblast goes unshielded. If the mirror is the opponent's only Tapu Fini response, Ayubi obviously thinks his Tapu Fini is good against whatever's in the back. We correctly shield off the Moonblast. This is going to allow Ayubi to get the full water gun farm down. This, of course, is only a surf, which we do survive. 
the opponent's going to be forced to show their third. As if they send out Dragonite, Dragonite is going to get Water Gun Farm down. The opponent sends out Dragonite, hoping we dump energy. AUB very disciplined, doesn't fall for any of that nonsense. And the opponent's final Pokemon is Cobalion. We fire off the Surf, forcing the final Protect Shield. We pivot out into Trevenant, and this is just game over. The opponent essentially hoping for a miracle, hoping Cobalion can 1v3 the team in the Zero Shield. Uh, interesting idea, buddy, but I don't think it's happening. We fire off the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball rocks them deep into the red. AUB then fires off the Seed Bomb, despite having the Shadow Ball and even resisted, it's going to get the job done. GG's and thanks for playing. AUB has tried to send as many different leads as possible, so in the next battle, we're going to see Rayquaza. Another dragon, but this dragon is very oppressive. The dragon tails tear through the shadow variant of Skunk Tank. However, the opponent allow us to strike first with the crunch, and of course they're going to invest the Protect Shield. As we've managed to gain ourselves some advantage in the opening matchup, I imagine Skunk Tank has done its job. The opponent fires off the breaking swipe, they get one further dragon tail, and we can now send out Tapu Fini. The opponent doesn't build up to a dragon ascent. So it's just a breaking swipe. I've got no idea why you'd throw a breaking swipe, but it is what it is. The opponent throw the breaking swipe, pivot out into Greninja, and we answer with Trevenant. This is a pretty neutral matchup. We resist the Water Shriekens. Our Shadow Claws are resisted. The Night Slash hits us for super effective, and the Seed Bomb hits them for super effective. You can see we far out bulk with Greninja. Seed Bomb, a pretty trash move, but it still almost one-shots Greninja. We just allow Trevenant to go down, saving two shields for Fini. The opponent fires off the Hydro Cannon. We withstand the damage, get the Water Gun Farm down, back out. Comes Rayquaza. We are going to dump energy, not wanting to get permanently debuffed. We fire off the Surf. Surf forces the final Protect Shield. We are already down below half health, but AU reluctant to shield a double resisted move. Are we going to save two shields for next season? AUB gets a huge Water Gun Farm down. The opponent's final Pokemon is Swampert. I think even with a debuff, two Moonblasts should knock out. Let's see, the first Moonblast does half of the opponent's HP. Win con for the opponent is going to be to Mudshot. Farm us down, but Tapu Fini says, not today, Swampert. And we reach the next Moonblast and take that game. Mr. AUB securing a nice two shield flex in the next battle. Cresselia, the first Cresselia we've seen of the video. The opponent say switches into Talonflame. We answer with Tapu Fini and the opponent concede. Ah, uh, moving swiftly on, I suppose. Ayubi really was not kidding when he said, I'm going to send you a variety of leads and a variety of Pokemon as we see Cray Dilly in the lead. Cray Dilly was very good in the Weather Cup. However, in the Open Ultra League, I don't think I've ever seen one. I don't think it's a bad pick. However, it does need to be all the way at level 50. So it's a very expensive pick. Ayubi shields up the first rock slide. We're going to tank the next rock slide, which gets us down below half health. Cradilly is one very thick boy, so we're going to be unable to poison jab farm down. AUB fires off the crunch. The opponent takes their shield advantage and send out the Kentucky Fried Chicken, Bird of Death. AUB, of course, going to stay in as we want to align Tapu Fini with this, but Skunk Tank still not done. Fires off the crunch, forces the Protect Shield. We get the defense drop. The opponent looks to the full. Incinerate farm down. Skunk Tank says no, makes the next crunch and forces both Protect Shields. We'll then send out Tapu Fini. The opponent lightly YOLOs the bird, but AUB does not care. Fini tanks the bird like an absolute boss. The opponent pivot out into Trevenant. We respond with our own Trevenant. AUB going to respect the potential Shadow Ball. The opponent full send. AUB can now over farm. Throw the Shadow Ball. One before the opponent reaches Shadow Ball. Number two is going to be high Trevenant by Trevenant. Back out comes Talonflame. We reach the Shadow Ball. And Trevenant is going to be a Talonflame counter. Confirm. GG's and thanks for playing. In the next battle, we see another Shadow Dragonite in the league. Dragonite farms up. They then pivot into Steelix. And this is the moment I have been waiting for. I think Steelix has absolutely wrecked this meta. It's so fucking annoying. But Tapu Fini is the hardest response you could possibly have. AUB even shields up the Earthquake. Knowing this is likely double steal. And Tapu Fini has play against the entirety of the team. AUB farms up. Throws the Surf. Surf isn't lethal, however the opponent only makes a breaking swipe. Double resisted move with non-same type attack bonus, I think that actually heals Feeny. The opponent actually sent back out Dragonite. Is it Cobalion in the back? Even with same type attack bonus, the double resisted Dragon Claw does absolutely nothing. Aubi looks to snipe with his loaded crunch. The opponent catches the crunch onto Toxicroak and we're already sitting in a great spot. The opponent hanging onto two protect shields. 
They fire off the mod bomb on the CMP time. Mod bomb does secure the knockout. We now send out Trevenant. Trevenant can easily tank a sludge bomb and we're going to be able to get a huge shadow floor farm down. We see the instant no shield deployed. Neutral sludge bomb does quite a lot of damage. AUB does get the full shadow claw farm down. Back out comes Dragonite. And we're going straight for the Shadow Ball. No messing around. Shadow Ball goes unshielded. And that's going to be all she wrote. Oof, that opponent's team was so incredibly weak to Tapu Fini. In the next battle, we see Jellison. This is a pretty good matchup for Skunk. However, other Dark Poisons do perform better here, such as Drapion, as we're a lot spammier than Skunk Tank. Our Poison Jabs are resisted. So this matchup becomes pretty neutral as the opponent does outpace us to the Surf's. What the heck? The opponent YOLO the Shadow Ball. Surf is definitely the way to go. I'm not entirely sure why you YOLO a Shadow Ball. AUB already invested one protection. He's actually going to two shield. The opponent again YOLO the Shadow Ball. Even if you've got Ice Beam, that would definitely be the way to go. The opponent then gives up Switch, sending out Zard, and we answer with Feeny. I was actually so confused to why the opponent was Shadow Ball. And I looked up on PV Poke as sometimes resisted moves do do more damage. However, not only is Surf more energy efficient, it still does more than a Shadow Ball. So definitely throw Surf's in that matchup. I think the only explanation to why they're throwing Shadow Balls is they're potentially still on Bubble Beam. However, getting back into the commentary, we force the final Protect Shield with the Surf Bait. The opponent now throw the Stone Edge, securing the knockout. AUB can send out Eva Pokemon. We send out Skunk Tank. We throw the flamethrower on the CMP tie. It's going to be high Virizion, by Virizion. Get fucking wrecked. Back out comes Jellison and two poison jabs secure the dub. And the UB wins a very strange battle. So like I said on Jellison, I definitely recommend Surf over Bubble Beam. In the next battle, we see Greedon. Greedon apparently beats all three of our Pokemon according to PV Pokes team builder. So let's see how UB plays this one out. As simulations are one thing, an actual battle performance is always something else. We tank the body slam, return fire with the crunch, we get the defense drop. Greedent now that has access to mud shot performs very nicely against dark poisons, whereas before, when it was on bullet seed, dark poisons would be in the driving seat. The opponent pivots out into Skeledurge. Interesting. We fire off the crunch, forcing a protect shield. Ayubi then looks to catch the disarming voice onto Tapu Fini. A very nice play. Non-stab disarming voice doesn't do too much damage. The opponent this time likely to throw the shadow ball, but Tapu Fini is going to easily withstand the damage and the incinerates are resisted. AUB now farms up, throws the surf just before the next charge move and surf will be secure in the knockout. If the opponent returns with Greedent, they're going to be forced to throw as this is going to be a very, very hard mud shot farm down. We reach the surf, surf forces the final protect shield. The opponent over farms, throws the body slam and we see the instant no shield deployed. Skunk Tank is quite low, so we opt to send out Trevenant. Trevenant can easily tag one non-stab crunch, and you never want to shield the first one, as the second would do more damage if the opponent gets the defense drop. The opponent then farms up. AUB makes a very nice catch of the next crunch. Onto Skunk Tank. Crunch even resisted, does secure the knockout. AUB again over farms to maximum energy. Throws the seed bomb on the CMP tie seed bomb, secures the knockout. The opponent's final Pokemon is Talonflame. Does Trevenant have enough in the tank to survive the incinerate damage? We fire off the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball lands for huge damage. AUB commits to the next Shadow Ball. Trevenant, once again, is a Kentucky Fried Chicken bird of death counter confirmed. Very, very good energy management to secure the dub. Shadow Skunk Tank into Zard. This essentially is the bait game. Blast Burn nearly one shot. AUB farms up, throws the crunch, loses CMP. AUB looks to call the bait and what a call. The opponent master bait. And I imagine that instantly regretting that decision. We return fire with the crunch, forcing a protect shield. We get the defense drop. Again, the opponent throws on CMP. However, if this is a Dragon Claw, we will survive. The opponent this time full send the blast burn and AUB correctly shields it up. He returns fire with the crunch and just like that, we win lead. The opponent sends out Wall Rain. The opponent going to throw the Icicle Sphere before we reach the Crunch. And if this is the common team with Swampert in the back, we have the perfect alignment. We can just send out Tapu Fini. The opponent likely to look to pivot, sending out Swampert, and we can answer with Trevenant. The opponent looked to make a Moonblast catch onto Venusaur. Not what I was expecting, however, alignment is still in our favour. Unlike the Great League, Trevenant does survive a neutral Sludge Bomb really well. I actually didn't expect it to do so little damage. AUB farms up. There's no bait in. We force in the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball forces a Protect Shield. 
Ayubi, of course, going to shield this next move. The opponent could potentially bait here, which they do. However, it doesn't matter. Ayubi's just got to throw the Shadow Ball, which he does on the CMP tie. Hi, Venusaur. Bye, Venusaur. Back out is going to come War Rain. The opponent forced to dump energy. However, they're pretty much in Moonblast range now. We have the Moonblast bank back out. Comes Feeny. We throw the Moonblast. Is Moonblast enough to secure the dub? No, it's not. However, even an Earthquake won't be enough from this range. And the opponent's going to concede. GG's and thanks for playing. Skunk Tank into G Weezy. A pretty good matchup. However, the play rough or overheat will land for big damage. However, these G Weezy users love to bait. Oof, we see the instant no shield deployed. Ayubi of huge Gahonas also agrees that these G Weezy users love to bait. The opponent throws the brutal swing. We withstand the damage return fire with the flamethrower, forcing a protect shield. Ayubi this time gonna respect the potential overheat. Again, the opponent masturbates. Holy. Undeterred though, Ayubi throws the next flamethrower, looking to get G Weezy out of here. The opponent chooses the double shield. And this time Ayubi says, fuck it, you can have it. The opponent finally send the overheat. We take our shield advantage, send out Feeny, looking for the aggressive farm down. The opponent not wanting to get farmed down. Give up switch, sending out Jellicent. This opponent has already baited twice. Ayubi respects the shadow ball and this time the opponent is not baiting. Trevenant can now over farm massively. Throw the shadow ball. Shadow ball, of course, will be secure in the knockout. If the opponent sends back out g -Weezy, they're going to get outpaced. However, they're not in seed bomb range, so Ayubi will have to throw the Shadow Ball. Back out, comes Wheezy. We don't get greedy. We throw the Shadow Ball, guaranteeing the knockout. The opponent's final Pokemon is Verizian. Uh, that's only three. The opponent throws the Leaf Blade or Sacred Sword. Leaf Blade, of course, isn't going to get the job done. Ayubi returns fire with the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball rocks Verizian down below half health. Ayubi at this point just playing with his food, stay in school kids, learns a count. He catches the next Leaf Blade onto Tapu Fini. The opponent is going to be forced to throw one further Leaf Blade. They actually lose CMP. As I don't use these meta Pokemon, I had no idea we won CMP, but either way, we take the dub. In the next battle, we see channel favourite, the big thick boy Shadow Snorlax into our skunk tank. The opponent doesn't throw the body slam. So if you're wondering how I count licks, it takes them 12 licks to reach the body slam or six poison jabs as we reach the crunch first you can see the opponent was over farming it looks like they're looking to bait the earthquake they bait us with a body slam this isn't enough for an earthquake at worst it is a super power which wouldn't be lethal but ayubi actually chooses to two shield his lead the opponent has a two to no shield advantage with a very healthy skunk tank with a whole heap of residual energy the opponent must be incredibly weak as they now send out a shadow claw user in the form of glissopod we fire off the crunch crunch forces a protect shield even Liquidation won't be lethal from this range. Can we survive the Shadow Claws to make the next crunch? Yes, we can, but the opponent actually choose to catch it. On to Charizard. Charizard not going to appreciate this crunch. It gets him down to around half health and we send out Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini going to get a huge water gun farm down. The opponent makes the first blast, but I don't even think they're going to make a second move. They do not. We get a huge water gun farm down back out. Comes Glissapod and Ayubi's going to full send the Moonblast. Does the opponent respect the damage? They do not. They near get one shot. The opponent finally throw a charge move. The opponent very much playing out. The Heart Attack wink on. Oof, Air Race doesn't even knock out. The opponent saves one shield for next season and Trevenant gets a nice rest on the bench. In the next battle, the variety of leads continue. We lead Skunk Tank into DD and again, we see Steelix about to get his ass beat. By Tapu Fini, let's go. This is honestly the most beautiful thing in existence. Steelix, the most ridiculously annoying Pokemon. Again, Ayubi correctly shields up an Earthquake. He's now going to commit to the full Water Gun farm down, just being annoying. Of course, we definitely don't need to shield up an Earthquake, but why not make this an even more miserable matchup? Ayubi actually waiting out his clock, allowing Steelix to throw one further break and swipe. Debuffing us into Oblivion. You can see Switch Timer pops up. We bank all of our energy. Pivot out into Skunk Tang. We've got two very good answers for DD. The opponent opt for the Psycho Boost and dip. A bit of a strange play, to be honest. It is single resisted. I guess they're just trying to get off some chip damage. They then send out Obstagoon. We fire off the Flamethrower. Flamethrower goes unshielded. And the opponent has already sealed their fate. This time, we don't commit to the Flamethrower. Just fire off the Crunch. Crunch also goes unshielded. The opponent is going to take us out. But this is just game over. We can send out Tapu Fini to operate as the damage sponge. 
This is only enough for a Night Sash or Cross Shop. Night Sash doesn't do too much. Again, we bank all of our energy, show them Trevenant, and the opponent says, no, thank you, I'm out of here. In the next battle, Glissopod. A pretty neutral matchup, despite our Poison Jabs hitting for neutral and their Shadow Claws hitting for resisted, as Glissopod does outpace us. They're going to go for the Liquidation, fishing for that Defense Drop. Of course, Liquidation is a Water-type Crunch Crone. They do get the Defense Drop. We fire off the Crunch, fishing for our own Defense Drop. The opponent invests that Protection, and we're two for two. RNG said Ultra League, far too thick. I'm going to try and help speed up the process. However, to be fair, we are 30 minutes into the video and we've not seen the timer pop up once. So despite this being a pretty meta team, something I don't showcase all that often, we have seen zero games go to the timer. And I'm very appreciative for that. We win lead in the one shield. The opponent sends out Giratina. We force the final protection with the crunch. The opponent looking for the full Shadow Claw farm down. They don't get it, but they actually snipe with Tapu Fini. And we answer Tapu Fini with Trevenant. Giratina did bank a boatload of energy, so I'll be interested to see where Ayubi spends his final potential. We throw the seed bomb, which Tapu Fini does shrug off. At the Moonblast, we see the instant no shield deployed. The opponent fires off the Moonblast, also getting us deep into the red. Ayubi then banks the Shadow Ball, pivots into his own Tapu Fini. A very nice play. Ayubi displaying very high gameplay IQ. The opponent throws the Surf. We commit to the Water Gun farm down. Does the opponent have Shadow Force? Come on, trainer, Shadow Force us. No, they fire off the Ancient Power, fishing for their boost. They don't get it. Would even a boost save the opponent at this stage? I don't think so. The opponent recognising that, and then we're also going to get probably around our 15th concede of the video in the next battle, Shiny Greninja. Another matchup where the Shadow far outperforms the regular as these Poison Jabs tear through the squishy Greninja. Ayubi shields the first move, recognising the opponent's unlikely to bait when we're at full health. If you let the first Hydro Cannon through, I guess you open up the door for the opponent to go for a few Master Bait and Sessions. Again, we see the defense drop. Ayubi this time looks to catch the Hydro Cannon onto Tapu Fini. If the opponent's got a Dark type in the lead, they've likely got a Fairy type response and holy, they definitely do in the form of Tentacruel. I believe this is the first Tentacruel we've seen in the video, which is quite a surprise as when I was playing around the 28, 2900 ELO range, I was getting fucking wrecked by this annoying squid. I think of all the BBML picks, Tentacruel is a really good pick in this meta, despite it being something you won't see me run personally. Tentacruel gets a huge poison jab farm down at AUB, instantly clicks no shield, and the opponent nuke us with the blizzard. Holy cow. Is AUB going to take a loss here? We send back out Skunk Tank, fire off the crunch, crunch, goes unshielded. The opponent's final Pokemon is G Weezy. I think there's zero reason for the opponent to bait. Just farm up to the back-to-back -back overheats and this opponent is going to win this battle. Ayubi going to respect the first move. The opponent full send the first overheat. They then go for the wham-bam combo play. Send out Greninja Hydro Cannon. Secures the knockout back out. Comes Trevenant and this time Ayubi is going to concede the match. GG's. Shadow Skunk into Verizian. I imagine there's a Steelix somewhere lurking in the back. The opponent say switches. Into Greedent, likely looking to bait out a potential fighter. Let's see if I'm correct. We throw the Crunch, Crunch goes unshielded, getting Greedent down below half health. The super spammy Squirrel, going to return fire with the Body Slam. We tank the first, we can tank the second, but we're going to be left incredibly low. AUB clicks the no shield, Body Slam gets us low, but we do survive. And we're putting shield and emphasis now on the opponent. Crunch forces the Protect Shield, we then pivot into Tapu Fini. And Tapu Fini is going to look for the full water gun farm down. I really like this play, to be honest. As I was going to say, if the opponent lets us farm down, we'll be able to get the moon blast ready. Instead, the opponent takes advantage of the missile on switch timer, pivot back out into Verizian. And Ayubi this time going for a cheeky master bait. We throw the surf. The opponent shields the surf, which now opens up the door to land the moon blast. However, I think Verizian is going to outpace us to back-to-back -back Leaf Blaze. There's the first. The opponent is at the back-to-back. -back. AUB thinking about shielding. We opt to shield the second Leaf Blade. AUB then banks the moon blast, sends out Trevenant. The opponent also banks the Leaf Blade and then send out Greedent. We fire off the Seed Bomb. Seed Bomb does secure the knockout. The opponent's final Pokemon is revealed to be Steelix. You can smell these BBML teams a mile away. There's no protect shields remaining, so we fire off the Shadow Ball before we get debuffed, and Shadow Ball rocks this bulky, annoying Steel Snake below half health. We're now going to be able to CMP tie Steelix to the next Shadow Ball. However, with a debuff, is Shadow Ball going to be enough to knock out? 
No, it's not. The opponent survives. However, we're also going to survive this break and swipe. This is going to be a very close end game. The opponent sends out Verizian. We answer with the loaded Moonblast. Moonblast secures the knockout and we're going to be able to water gun farm down and take that game. Yet more Shadow and Shadow Crime Skunk Tank into Warrain. Warrain can of course nuke us with an Earthquake. However, I doubt they full send an Earthquake in a Shadow and Shadow Crime battle. We fire off the Crunch, forcing a protection. The opponent farms up to what could be an Earthquake. We see AUB respect it. The opponent throw the Icicle Sphere bait. They're just going straight Icicle Sphere at this range. We can tank the next one to AUB, tanks the next one. He then returns fire with the crunch. If the opponent doesn't shield this, Skunk Tank will win the one shield. The opponent opt to two shield their lead. They do commit to the full Powder Snow farm down. However, we can send out Feeny to operate as the damage sponge. There's zero reason to bait. The opponent full sends the Earthquake. The opponent will reach an Icicle Sphere. If AUB doesn't throw it, looks like he's committing to the full Water Gun farm down. Icicle Sphere gets us into the red. AUB has minimal HP, but we've got a whole heap of energy. Out comes Cresselia. We bank the energy, pivot into Trevenant, and the opponent's final Pokemon is Toxicrope. Toxicrope, not going to appreciate this Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball nearly one shots. The opponent is going to reach a Sludge Bomb. Is this where AUB invests his final protection? No, we tank the Sludge Bomb, commit to the full Shadow Claw farm down when Cresselia does return. We're going to be able to outpace the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball going to land for huge damage. Although Cresselia is incredibly thick. The opponent recognising they've got themselves into Moonblast range. Going to save us some time and concede the match. Skunk Tank into DD. Pretty good matchup. However, Trevent has an even better matchup. Not that we're complaining with this lead. We farm up, throw the Crunch. Crunch does a lot of damage despite Defence Deoxys being incredibly thick. It gets him below half health. We even get the Defence drop. AUB looking to shield up the Thunderbolt. The opponent goes for the Psycho Boost and dip. Send out Steelix. And yet again, we get to see my favourite thing in existence. A Steelix getting absolutely pissed on by Tapu Fini. Quite literally, as let's be honest, Water Gun looks like it's going for a wee wee with the animation. I find it really interesting how AUB always shields up the Earthquake, which is an easy tank, recognising that Steelix players are usually pretty weak to Tapu Fini. The opponent going to fire off the breaking swipe and it's time to play the sit and wait game. AUB, of course, trying to call off his switch timer. It looks like the opponent... Is lagging, or maybe they're not lagging. When you stop attacking, sometimes the game thinks, what is going on? Switch timer pops up. We commit to the water gun farm down. We're going to see the pivot back out into Skunk Tank. Skunk Tank going to reach the crunch. Hopefully going to force a protect shield or the knockout. The opponent opt to shield. I don't even know if we're in Thunderbolt range. Let's see. Deoxys just hits like a wet noodle. Thunderbolt isn't lethal. We saw him all KO. The opponent's final Pokemon is Giratina, and they concede the match. In the next battle, what the heck is this? Sarah Steeler? I have never seen this in Ultra League in my life. As these battles are super close to Legend, a lot of players who are already Legend like to run some spice and this is definitely a very spicy pick. We farm up to the flame for our bait with the crunch and we force ourselves a shield. I'll be honest, I don't even know what moves this has. It threw a body slam the first time. If the opponent throws another body slam, which they do, we are going to survive. And Ayubi is going to make the flamethrower. Is the opponent willing to two shield their lead? Yes, they are. Ayubi allows himself to get farmed down and we send out Tapu Fini. The opponent pivots out into Shadow Polyrath and here comes Trevenant. Trevenant can easily survive one Ice Punch. I'm sure if you've made it to this part of the video, you know AUB is going to throw six Shadow Claws and then probably the Shadow Ball. A Shadow Ball does do more damage, looking to get this Polyrath out of here. AUB, of course, doesn't disappoint me over farming, but my god, Shadow Ball leaves this Polyrath on one HP and a Dream. We opt to shield up the next Ice Punch, commit to the Shadow Claw farm down. Back out comes Sarah Steeler. Is this thing bulky? Let's find out. Shadow Ball is tanked by the opponent. Sarah Steeler looks to throw energy. A double resisted Body Sam probably knocks out from this range. Body Sam actually isn't lethal. We pivot out into Tapu Fini and the opponent's got Verizian in the back. The opponent is going to fire off a Leaf Blade. We are going to make the Moonblast. However, is Moonblast enough to knock out the thick Verizian? Moonblast isn't lethal. Oof. Does Trevent have enough HP to survive these double kicks back out? Comes Trevenant. We do get the Shadow Claw farm down. We leave with the Shadow Ball. And who was worried? Ayubi wins an incredibly close game. GG's and some very nice spice from the opponent.
Heading into the next battle, we pick up a great lead and an even better safe switch. I think again, we're probably going to shield the Earthquake. As that has been how he's played out every other Steelix mid-game matchup. We're 40 minutes into the commentary, so let's see if he throws a spanner in the works. No, we instantly shield. The opponents never bait. We correctly shield up an Earthquake. I think that's a very easy shield if that's something you're looking to do and it keeps your Tapu Fini incredibly healthy. The opponent throws the break in swipe. Again, we're going to see Ayubi stop attacking, trying to call off his timer. The opponent throws one more break in swipe. When the timer pops up, which it has, we commit to the water gun farm now. We're going to pivot back out into Skunk and see what the opponent's got in the back. You can see Ayubi spamming the switch. Out comes Fini, and just like that, we draw out the bear trap. And this is perfect. Ayubi banks all that energy on his Fini, which will help get rid of this stun fisk. And we can obviously just align Trevenant with that Tapu Fini. Ayubi instantly clicks no shield. The opponent gonna nuke us with the Earthquake. We can send back out Feeny. That's almost at the back-to-back -back surfs. The opponent throws the Rock Slide, an easy tank for Feeny. Rock Slide doesn't do too much damage. Ayubi farms up to 100 energy, throws the surf. Is the opponent willing to start shielding here? No, they're not. Back out comes Tapu Feeny. We fire off the Moonblast, which leave a force of Protect Shield. All land for huge damage. The opponent invests that Protect Shield. We show him Trevenant. And the opponent is also going to concede the match. GG's and thanks for playing. And that is going to draw to a close today's showcase. That was the longest battle submission I've ever tried to shoutcast. It's been over 40 minutes shoutcast on my mobile phone. You can see we started today at 2800 ELO all the way up to AUB claiming that Pikachu Libre. That is 13 times. This season alone, this team has hit legend. So in the final week, if you're looking for a team to grind, trying to reach that pinnacle of 3k, Give this team a try for yourself. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button if you're new. Consider subscribing if you like your battles featured on my channel. A link to my battle submission form is down below. And as always, a huge thank you to everyone for watching. And I will see you all in the next one.